What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Philippe that is currently over off the coast of Bermuda. It has become post-tropical a lot earlier than expected. We also have a lot of air activity going on in the Atlantic, in the main development region. We have a new area of interest to pay attention to, to. We are also looking at potential tropical development in the Gulf of Mexico in the next few days. All stuff we're keeping a very close eye on as we look further into this. So here's the situation we have right here. This is post-tropical cyclone Philippe. Right now, as it's approaching Bermuda, and then it is later expected to head towards Maine, New Hampshire, bring some flooding in all those areas right there. So that's what we ha uh, here's what we have. Here is the public advisory. Philippe becomes post-tropical, but still poses a risk to flash flooding across New England this weekend. This is the last National Hurricane Center advisory as of right now. Here's what we uh, here's what we have. There's no uh, they've discontinued the tropical storm warning for Bermuda, as this thing is no longer a tropical storm. It is a post-tropical cyclone. At 11 a.m., the center of post-tropical cyclone Philippe was located at latitudes 30.7 degrees north, longitude 46.6 degrees west. It is moving to the north-northeast near 16 miles per hour. It is a, a northward or northwest uh, northwestward motion and a faster pace is expected over the next few days. Maximum sustained winds are at 50 miles per hour. Pressure is 1,003 millibars and the current and tropical storm force winds extend outward 205 miles from the center. This is the going to be the last uh, public advisory due to this thing becoming a post-tropical cyclone at this current point. But before that uh, does expire, we're going to go ahead and show you some of the stuff that we're looking at. Let's go ahead and first show you the cone as we have it pulled up because this is going to be a very big threat to New England and Canada as time continues to go on. Here's the situation. All the tropical storm force winds are once again to the eastern part of the, st uh, of the system at this current point. That doesn't mean you're not going to get a lot of rainfall in association with this. According to the cone, it is anticipated to make landfall near the United States-Canadian border in Maine as a post-tropical cyclone before moving on into, into Canada and bringing some potential snow. Uh, actually, we've been keeping an eye on it as we looked at it. We're going to go ahead and show you the discussion at this point. Post-tropical cyclone is expected to make landfall in the next uh, in the next 48 hours at this current point. Here's what we have. The center we are focusing overnight has become untrackable uh, this morning, and it appears to have been absorbed by a nearby fr uh, frontal zone. In addition, the in addition the overall cloud pattern now has uh, it now has the look of a classic extra tropical cyclone with leap center resembling the the triple point of an occlusion. Based on these recent develops, Philippe has been declared a post-tropical cyclone. Its intensity re uh, remains at 45 knots or 50 miles per hour, mainly based on uh, continuity. Continuity, excuse me. The post-tropical cyclone still has an opportunity to strengthen a bit over the next day or so due to borrow clinic influences. Due to the system structure and forward motion, the strongest winds are most likely to be on the eastern side of the circulation and will most likely be affect portions of Atlantic Canada. Weakening is forecast inland. Right now, we're, we are looking at potentially 50 miles per hour. Now, we could potentially in the next 24 hours get up to 60 miles per hour or 50 knots for those of you who are living in Atlantic Canada. So even though this is no longer a tropical system, it is still a very serious situation. And just because it's post-tropical doesn't mean it's not dangerous. So everyone needs to keep that in mind as we continue into this. The flood threat is also pretty considerable across much of New England, including New York, from Albany all the way to the U.S.-Canadian border. A slight risk for flooding is in effect for all these areas. A marginal risk is in effect for flooding through, through Pennsylvania all the way to the U.S.-Canadian border. So definitely something we need to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. A slight risk means we have a 15% chance of uh, some significant flooding happening in the, in the next few days. So we'll have to pay attention to it as time continues to go on. So that's what we have going on with Philippe. The wind uh, history has also been pretty interesting as we wrap on the, uh, Philippe's rather il illustrious or non-illustrious uh, uh, lifespan. It's kind of started out in the main development region. It kind of had a fluctuation of wind speed, and then it just kind of started making a massive dive to the west-southwest, and then started to bring 
uh, head towards the nor- uh, west northwest, bringing lots of impacts towards the Lesser Antilles, including but not limited to the Leeward Islands, Guadeloupe, the U.S. Virgin Islands. Even some rainfall in Puerto Rico was recorded from Philippe at this current point. So just because this was a tropical storm doesn't mean it didn't bring any impacts. So that's something we need to continue to monitor as time continues to go on. We'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But at this point, the, the Philippe's uh, end is coming. And as soon as this thing makes landfall, it's going to be merging with a, fr- a, a frontal system and just kind of uh, staying where it is and may- producing a huge snowstorm in Atlantic Canada. That's what we have going on. Next thing we need to show you is this area of interest. We now have a 50% chance of development in the next uh, seven days. Here's the situation. A low-latitude tropical wave is expected to move off the west coast of Africa later today and tonight. Thereafter, environmental conditions appear generally conducive for gradual development of the system, and a tropical depression could form by early to middle part of next week while it moves westward to west-northwestward across the eastern tropical Atlantic. Once again, a 50% chance of formation in the next seven days. So, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of stuff continues to uh, happen. We're still paying attention to some potential tropical development in the Gulf of Mexico, and as we get into this active weather period be sure to check out my friends over at prestige weather consulting they do individual one-on-one consulting for weather uh, catered to your local area for more information be sure to check them out in the link in the description down below and be sure to use code predictor for 50 percent off your first month they've been helping me out a lot so shout out to them but with that being said ladies and gentlemen we're going to go ahead and get some to some operational models for you guys so that way you know what the hell is going on and you're like, Patrick, you keep talking about all these storms. Well, where are they going to go? What are the models saying about this? Well, here's what the models say about that. To start with the European model at this point, here's the situation we have at this current point. The European has the remnants of Philippe just kind of just starting to potentially develop and strengthen as a low-pressure system, as a mid-latitude cyclone, as it's approaching of, uh, as it's approaching Maine and then uh, expected to potentially make landfall over there while bringing impacts to uh, for pretty much everywhere from New York all the way to the U.S. Canadian border at this current point. So definitely something to pay attention to as time continues to go on and it absorbs and merges it with this low pressure system at this current point and then just kind of stays over there and brings some a uh, pretty decent snowfall across a lot of those areas. We actually can uh, can go ahead and if we go ahead and use the regions and ch- uh, and check the northeastern United States, we can actually try to pinpoint some of the stuff that's going uh, going on with the uh, with uh, some of the stuff that's going on. Actually, we'll go ahead and pu- uh, we'll actually go ahead and pull up the GFS at this current point to get a better understanding of it. Here's the radar at this current point. Yeah, potentially some pretty big snowfall for parts of Canada, especially in October for the next two uh, two days after it makes landfall. So that's going to be interesting to see how that whole thing plays out. So that's what we have with the European at this current point with Philippe. As for this area of interest that's coming off, the European's not exactly registering it as of yet. I mean, it's starting to, but right now it's just kind of gradually organizing and developing, potentially going to merge with a low pressure system at this current point as well. And we're still paying attention to the Gulf of Mexico as well because other models are picking up on potential at least a brief development at this current point. So here's the GFS model at this current time. GFS has been very interesting to say at the very least. And GFS has fleet making landfalls a 982 millibar a mid-latitude cyclone near the U.S.-Canadian border, most likely on the main side, before kind of merging with a low-pressure system and bringing tons and tons of snowfall for a lot of these areas in uh, in Canada at that point. So early winter storm for you guys, so that'll be interesting. And then we have this area of interest that's gradually organizing, developing. The GFS is actually having this strengthened down to a potentially a Category 2 hurricane at, at about 150 hours out, which... I will be honest, I'm not 100% sure that's going to happen, but environmental conditions definitely are conducive for that kind of development. So definitely something to monitor as we go into like into day 5, day 6, day 7. However, by day eight, it starts to weaken and starts kind of stagnate before starting to move and continue to stay out in the eastern part of the Atlantic. However, this high pressure system, this high pressure ridge starts building up and potentially has this thing pushing out to the west before the, the trough kind of interacts with it. And then it just kind of just fluctuates and just stays out here and gradually weakens from there. I'm going to be completely honest from you guys, for you guys. The track, I don't trust anything further than this. That's the furthest I trust it, primarily because of the stuff that we're paying attention to, and just 
it doesn't really make any sense unless there's a complete collapse of the steering currents for this thing to be pushing anywhere to the east at this current point. Meanwhile, we're paying attention to the Gulf of Mexico as well for some potential tropical development. About, I'd say about a week out or so, we are starting to see low pressure registering off the coast of Mexico in the western Gulf at this current point. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as time continues to go on. It's going to potentially br uh, bring some impacts maybe to the Gulf Coast, maybe to the Yucatan Peninsula. We're not 100% sure at this current point time. That's the GFS model for you. Next thing we're showing you is the CMC model. CMC has been pretty consistent, I would say, for the last several days. CMC has fleet making landfall in Maine and then becoming a low pressure system over Atlantic Canada at that current point. Meanwhile, this thing starts to gradually organize, develop, start strengthening potentially into a category one hurricane as time continues to progress. And the CMC is still uh, picking up on potentially a low pressure system, this area of interest right here that could develop before impacting parts of Louisiana at that current point in time. We're at this point about what, five days out by the time it starts to gradually organize and develop. I wouldn't be surprised of the NHC tags a potential area of interest in the next two to three days, primarily because of the, th of the threat is still potentially there that we'll have to continue to keep an eye on. Next model we're going to go ahead and show you is the NavGem. NavGem has been very interesting to say at the very least. The NavGem has been kind of more, one of the more unpopular models that I've used in my opinion. NavGem, if we take a look at Philippe, has a thing making landfall near the U.S. Canadian border after making landfall near Halifax as a 970 millibar low pressure system, and then it starts starts to kind of just uh, turn more to the west and kind of bring becomes a massive snowstorm for parts of Canada. While this area of interest starts to organize and develop and this potential area of interest starts to maybe shows a little bit of life before bring some impacts to maybe Alabama, Florida, Georgia in the next uh, seven days. So definitely something to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. Meanwhile, this area of interest starts organizing and develops strengthens at least into a strong tropical storm as time continues to go on. So definitely something to pay attention to as time continues to go on. And that last model we're going to go ahead and show you is the Icon model. Icon has been, I'd, I'd say, a pretty consistent yet interesting model throughout this whole hurricane season, I'd say. Philippe is making landfall near uh, in Maine and then just kind of just bringing a lot of impacts, potentially a lot of flash flooding to the rural Maine, M New Hampshire, Vermont, parts of Massachusetts, and a lot of other areas in New England and New York. And then it becomes a massive snowstorm as usual. We keep t saying this like a broken record. And then we have this area of interest organizing, developing Developing, potentially strengthening into a tropical storm as time continues to go on. And meanwhile, I'm also paying attention to a little bit of a spin up by the icon with this area of interest right here, potentially bring some rainfall from Louisiana all the way to Florida. So this is a huge situation we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. Hurricane season absolutely is not over yet. Everyone needs to keep that in mind, and we're going to continue to keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal with this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Be sure to check out uh, Prestige Weather Consulting using the code PREDICTOR for 50% off your first month. And with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.